Jones, I think we can all agree that the Patriots being underwater is just fantastic to watch. Yeah, uh, and uh, the the Belichick reaction on the sideline after the challenge that shouldn't have been challenged is just historic, and we'll see it on social media for the next ten to twenty years. I mean, Injected that's what that kind of reaction was. Throwing the body. phone, it was it was it was great to see. Anyway, we'll get into that, uh, and we got a good show on tap. Carl Banks, uh, we'll have uh, Ian Rappaport will join us a little later on in the program. John Flaherty, Yes Network will join us. We'll have Logan Ryan. I was thinking about Carl Banks because Logan Ryan of the Giants will join us coming your way fresh off that new spanking three-year contract with the Giants a little later on the program as well but we kick it off with a little bit of baseball because yeah. give the Padres a lot of credit and this is not hello San Diego this is not Ron Burgundy but it's a case of the Padres make a couple of deals to strengthen up that starting rotation uh, and adding Blake Snell from the Tampa Bay Rays and also making the trade the salary dump with the Chicago Cubs and acquiring Hugh Darvish who's got three years 59 million dollars left on his contract and bring him out west to San Diego as they're now not just a fun team to watch, but they're a real challenge to every other team in the National League and everybody else in Major League Baseball as they add those two pitchers to their arsenal of really young talent led by Fernando Tatis Jr. With that being said, Maggie, here's the one thing. And Steve Cohen on social media, I know everyone wants to get him to react to something that they tweet. And, you know, point seventy two, you're reading the book and you've given us excerpts of the book. I'll tell you this about Steve Cohen, though. I don't want to hear excuses after trades go down about why the Mets were not in those trades. And I'll give you a prime example, number one, from 13 hours ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, give the Padres credit. They had a top five farm system that gave them flexibility to trade for Snell. Newsflash, the Mets farm system needs to be replenished. Well, I got to be honest with you. You know, here's the one thing I don't want to hear about from Cohen is excuses, right? Do excuses play in his investment firm? No, they honestly do not. And I'm not telling you that the Mets are not going to do anything here, but all I hear from Cohen are, whether it be the interviews with Serby, with the stuff, the Q&A with Howie, I mean, everything that he's done here, the interaction with fans on social media. All I've heard from Steve Cohen, I get you're not spending money like a drunken sailor, but I'll put you this, if you're not in on Blake Snell, then you better go get Trevor Bauer. But if you're not in on Blake Snell, then how are you in on Nolan Arenado? How are you in on Francisco Lindor? And I know those are two different players and two different contract situations because Lindor's only got one year left on his deal. Now, Arenado's got a lengthy contract, but there is an opt-out in that contract as well. I don't know if he necessarily would opt out, but... How would, you, how would you potentially acquire either of those two stars if the Mets don't have the assets down in the farm system or they don't want to give to get on the major league level to acquire those two players? And if you're not going to strengthen this team in free agency, then how are you exactly going to strengthen this team? I'm starting to get a little bit concerned here. And I get Sandy's way. And you want to build a healthy organization. Yes, you want to invest in analytics. Yes, you want to invest in player development. Yes, you want to invest in scouting. Yes, you want to spend internationally. Yes, you want to have a mantra that runs tried and true throughout the organization from the top down. Look at the, the way the St. Louis Cardinals do it and build up their team. You know, and other organizations have been successful with it. I get it. And all those things are good. Some things, and you have to give to get. So you have to spend money in order to strengthen those areas, Mackie. But I'm starting to get bothered a little bit by the state. Steve Cohen excuse making on social media about why the Mets are not doing something because Hugh Darvis with the Chicago Cubs. Yes, I understand the Padres have got a top five farm system, but they didn't give up all that much. That was a salary dump by the Chicago Cubs. They wanted to get out from underneath the three years and $59 million. They got a collection of talent, nothing overwhelming in nature, but they got a collection of talent from 11 through 20 in the Padres farm system. We'll see how those prospects do turn out, but they didn't get their number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven. No, they didn't get none of those guys. None of those guys are going to Chicago. So I'm tired. Of, I don't want to hear the excuses from Cohen about what the Mets don't have when you're seeing a guy like you, Darvish, get and his salary get dumped in San Diego. And that would have been a nice guy to plug into that Mets rotation. Okay, wait. But these are two separate things, right? So Cohen's tweeting about how they couldn't get Snell because they don't have a farm system that would be appealing enough for the Rays to make that deal. That, to me, is not an excuse. That's the truth. That's the truth that the Mets may not have been able to get Snell because Snell, Snell's making $10 million a year, which is not a lot for a guy who could be a top 15 pitcher in baseball next year. So you're going to have to have a lot more 
player capital that you're going to have to trade back. Meanwhile, Nolan Arenado, if the Colorado Rockies want to get out from underneath that massive contract, well, you're not going to have to give up as much and as talented of prospects because you're taking the money back. That's what the Rockies want to get rid of. So I would say with the Snell situation, that's just the truth. Like the Mets aren't, if they don't have a farm system that's good enough to get Blake Snell, that, that's something that needs to be addressed, rectified. That's not going to happen overnight. You got to give Sandy and his staff time to replenish that farm system. Okay. But yeah, it does set up more of the expectation that the Mets are going to spend in free agency. And if they're going to add pitching, it's obviously, you know, any kind of caliber, it's more likely to come through free agency. Because the Mets have money now. So, yeah, it does set up the expectation they're going to continue to spend. I already had that expectation, though, whether it's going to be Bauer or whether it's going to be Springer, and then you sprinkle in the Odorizzi's and the other guys and the second-tier free agents in terms of pitchers. Something's going to move there. But I didn't see this as excuse-making from Cohen. When he's talking about Snell, he's just saying the truth. Now, you, Darvish, is different. Darvish is a very different animal there because Darvish was the salary dump. I'm pretty surprised that the Mets were not in on Darvish. Considering what the comeback was and the fact that they were really just looking for someone to take on that basically $60 million salary, why weren't the Mets on in on Darvish? The Mets need pitching here. And I know you could say, you Darvish, he's had some injury history. And I would understand that, and you'd be 100% right. But sandwiched around that bad 2018 where he was injured, and let's just take the most recent one, Sandwiched around that are two seasons where he made over 30 starts. I mean, especially in last year, I know it was a 60-game season, but he was one of the best pitchers in the National League last year. So that, to me, would be a little bit concerning. Like, that wasn't a lot to give up to get Darvish. Meanwhile, Snell, I think that Steve Cohen's just saying the truth. I have no problem with the tweets. I still love the fact that he's this accessible. And you know what? There's another part of this when you're looking at the Cubs angle, which them having to get rid of one of their best pitchers in baseball just really made me very appreciative of the fact that Steve Cohen now owns the team and the Wilpons don't. And I don't mean that as a disrespect fully to the Wilpons, but can you imagine in a bad economic climate where their main industry is commercial real estate, which is, I'm sure, taking a massive hit because of the pandemic, because of all the financial issues that the Mets are, are, have already had, they would be the big market team that might have to be getting rid of guys. Instead, it's the Cubs. I feel terrible for their organization, but I just wish that the Mets had been able to capitalize on the bad misfortune of the Cubs in the in the form of you, Darvish. In terms of Snell, I don't think there was anything the Mets could have done there. I, I think the package that came back from the Padres was too good, and, and the Mets didn't have anything they could that they could offer that would have been even close. So the Mets have nothing on their major league and minor league team that could interest Bl- the Tampa Bay Rays for Blake Snell. Uh, I don't. I think the Padres liked. Excuse me. I liked. I think the Rays liked what the Padres were going to yeah, offer. Yeah, the Padres gave a lot, up a lot more. For Blake the, the, the Padres have the second ranked farm system in baseball in twenty twenty. No, I, I get it. So I, I don't I know if the Mets that. were going to compete there. I, I I I totally get it. I totally get it. You know, but th- this is coming off the tweet from Steve Cohen on the night that Blake Snell was acquired by the San Diego uh, by the San Diego Padres, yeah. where. He basically told fans that there's nothing going on because he was going to give his general manager Jared Porter <laughs> right, a call right. to see a what call was going on. To see what's and happening. literally, All and quiet. 90, <laughs> literally ninety minutes later, Blake Snell was traded from the Tampa Bay Rays to the San Diego Padres. Not exactly a good look if you're the Mets owner. And I get he wants uh, to interact with the fans. I understand he wants to talk about the food he ate. He eats at City Field. I understand he wants to talk about the jerseys and whether or not the black jerseys are coming back. And you know he's, he's Joe Pa Met fan. I get it. I mean, that's all well and good. That's fine. But he was, you know, the, what excited the Met fans is not what Steve Cohen does on social media, but the fact that he has the $14.5 billion to spend. It doesn't make you nervous that we've got to build the organization if you go into the interactions that he has with fans and not just the top line stuff, right? If you go in and fans ask him questions about spending money, well, we're not going to, you know, he'll, he'll like a, a reaction from a fan saying, well, you can't just spend in free agency that doesn't lead to long-term sustained success you have to build a healthy organization well both can be true i mean it doesn't have to be one or the other you can spend in free agency 
And at the same time, you could build a healthy organization by investing in everything that I mentioned before. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You don't have to take the long road, the long path to success in 2021 or 2022 or 2023, whatever it might be, in order to get there and take it to where we're rebuilding this franchise from the top top bottom. We're going to go and rebuild the farm system. We're going to spend in in analytics and international scouting. Well, you can also spend in free agency. You can accomplish both at once i can spend in free agency and i can also invest in the farm system and develop better prospects too of course but i think that isn't that the plan i mean i I don't know if that's that's, the plan he's he's admitting the shortcoming there of the mets on twitter for all to see I think that's a positive step. I mean, the Mets do have to replenish the farm system, but they also have these short-term goals of winning right away because Jacob DeGrom's in his prime and you have a team that is very good offensively and you got to go right now, right? This is this is it. We got to this is the time to capitalize. But the Snell thing was I don't think was was really going to happen if you consider what the Padres wanted from the Rays and excuse me what the Rays wanted from the Padres and and it just maybe wasn't the right fit there. The Darvish thing is different. The Darvish thing is different because if you have Jacob DeGrom and you have Marcus Stroman and then you have Peterson. What? Okay, a rookie coming off his rookie year, which we're you not sure how. Got to figure out what you're doing with Lugo. Got to figure out what you're doing with Lugo. You're not sure what the inning situation is, is going to be. Matt's, I've already said, so I can't ever with. I, I'm sorry. A local local boy does good. I love that story, but I can't with Steven Matz anymore. And I, I can't expect anything from him. And there's a lot of question marks in the starting rotation. And so if Bauer's not going to be the guy, which I'm still hoping that he is, but say he's not, Darvish seemed like a good opportunity to add someone who you'd be paying about $20 million a year, about average, over the next three. And someone who I think has proven that he can be healthy because he came back from that from that elbow and, and had 31 starts and then 12 last year. So I think that's in the rear view for him. So you're not nervous at all, Maggie, as a Met fan, that you're going to get an excuse or you are not going – the expectations for this offseason are not going to be met. Well, of course I'm nervous about that, but – you know, but, Are but you the, more but nervous the Snell, now than you the were Snell four tweet. weeks ago? No, the Snell tweet, I'm still the same level. The Snell tweet to me didn't seem like an excuse. The Snell tweet to me seemed like just acknowledging the obvious, which is the Mets don't have that kind of flexibility. And to be honest, coming off the Brody Van Wagenen era, where he was trading away some of the top prospects left and right for moves that, quite frankly, didn't work or have shown that they haven't worked yet or haven't paid off, I'm kind of over talent leaving the building right now for for something that that maybe is not a sure thing. And they don't they didn't have the flexibility to get Snell anyway. I fully believe that. So this well, did bother me. Well, listen, keep tweeting, that, Steve. Keep uh, tweeting, yeah, I Uncle mean, Steve. listen, I I don't. He could keep. Well, I mean, that's all they're doing is tweeting. So he better keep tweeting because the Mets have all well, they've signed is May and McCann. I mean, so that's it. Uh, so we'll see. They decide to pass on the best catcher in free agency and brought in James McCann, which I don't have an issue with. I really don't. But let's see what's yeah, next. I had a bigger and, issue with that than you. And no, I'm the I know Mets that. Fan. I, I thought Real Muto so, was the slam dunk no brainer. Let's see what is next. Let's see if it's Bauer. Because the promise is, and it, it's been kind of a round robin of expectations. Early on, you heard from Andy Martino, SNY, friend of the program, does a great job. Martino telling you that the Mets are going to sign either one big free agent or make one big trade this offseason. Then you had the Buster Olney tweet from ESPN about five weeks ago saying two of the four and listed the four guys. Two of these four guys will be playing in baseball in 2021 in Flushing out at City Field. So let's see where it is. You've had Sandy Alderson saying, I'm shopping at the gourmet section. I know you love that line, Maggie. Then you get the whole line of, of Steve Cohen. Well, we're not going to spend like drunken sailors. And then doubling down on that saying that, well, that doesn't lead to a healthy organization or long-term sustained success by trying to build a quick winner in free agency so we'll see where this met team goes i just don't don't need to listen it's abundantly clear it's not like blake snell was a top of the mets list right it wasn't he was an option if they didn't get bauer that was the option that we talked about and i'm a bigger you know and i like blake snell i think that's a hell of an acquisition by the san diego padres i just didn't love the tweet from cohen afterward telling you the well we know the mets don't have a top five farm system and we know the padres uh, farm system is loaded you don't have to appease the met fan when blake snell gets moved 
from Tampa Bay to San Diego and telling you why that deal did not go down when he was not the guy at the top of the list. Now, you want to excuse well, it if you don't get Springer? You want to excuse it if you don't get Trevor Bauer? You want to excuse it if uh, Nolan Arenado ends up someplace else? I mean, then that's fine. But I wasn't exactly looking for the Mets owner to give me an excuse of why Blake Snell was not a Met. Because when that deal went down, I wasn't exactly thinking about the Mets and why they didn't get Blake Snell. And there was the Met owner telling you, well, here's the reason why our farm system stinks. Well, I mean, transparency is never something that I'm going to turn my nose up at because I think this was him being transparent about they didn't, the Mets didn't have enough. And it's not the Mets don't have a top five farm system. Most. The Mets don't have a top 20 farm system in Major League Baseball. I believe it's ranked 22nd overall. And I think the Yankees are right behind them or right about there. They're about tied. So it's not about top five. It's about top 20. It's about having any kind of flexibility whatsoever for, for a premium guy. Like you have Snell who is getting paid, you know, not top dollar in terms of baseball wise for being one of the top pitchers. So it was going to be a massive haul from the Padres that the Rays are going to be looking for. Rightfully so. Snell is still three years away from free agency. I mean, you get him for a really long time here in his most productive and prime years. You're going to have to give a ton. It, th- this was never going to be a thing that the Mets were going to be capable of. The U Darvish was a little bit different, but we want to hear from you. 877-337-6666. Moose and I don't see this the same way. Did you see it as Cohen making excuses with that tweet, or did you see it as Cohen just being open and honest with the Met fan about why Snell is with the Padres well, do I need to hear and not an with the Mets? The, well, do I need the Yankees now need to issue a statement? Does every team need to issue a statement of why they didn't go get Blake Snell? I mean, I don't know. But what is it? Because well, now it's not? allowed. Do I need to hear from Cashman? Here is the Yankees statement on why, well, we don't have well. the farm system right now to go get Blake Snell, and the Rays didn't want to deal with the Yankees. Well, would you like to hear from Brian Cashman about why they weren't in on you, Darvish? Because somehow the Yankees, the evil empire, the fully operational Death team, Star doesn't have any money? When a trade goes down, Steve Cohen needs to react to it. This is why we didn't do that deal for full transparency for all Met fans out there, right? I like it. I wish I heard from Cashman. Why were they not in on you, Darvish? You I, need pitching, too. I don't think they were ever a fan of you, Darvish. But yeah, Remember I, in 2018, wasn't the report that they were offering a big deal and then well, Darvish came out on Twitter I, and I said think, no and then to backtrack and say, actually, yes, the Yankees no, did I offer me a deal? I don't think they'd go for three years, 59 million. The Yankees are crying poor. I know, but they still need pitching. They, you can replace Masahiro Tanaka for basically the same salary. Oh, well, maybe they ain't. Maybe we need to hear statements from everybody. <laughs> everybody like should it. issue statements. Statements on everyone. Cohen. Someone What's the guy Yankee signs. statement going to be? The next trade that his... goes down. I want to hear from Steve Cohen. Why the Mets doing? Why weren't the Mets in on that guy? I want to hear when Lindor is now a Blue Jay or whatever. When uh, Arenado gets traded someplace else other than Flushing, I want to hear from Cohen on social media. Tell me why the Mets weren't in on him. I think the Yankees' new logo, though, is not going to be the hat with the baseball on or the pinstripes. It's going to be someone with their pockets turned inside out and their palms up like, we don't have any money. Well, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. 877-337-6666. It's Moose and Maggie just getting going here on this Tuesday midday. want to hear from you, the fan in New York.